Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about how MATLAB became so popular in universities out there. Now, of course, long time ago when I was a graduate student and a UG student, Fortran was the language which was widely used for scientific and numerical computing. And in fact, Fortran could do most of the things which are required as far as scientific computing is concerned. Fortran not only had the different functions built into the system, Fortran also had a plethora of libraries out there, for example, the Imcel libraries and so on, where you could call various subroutines which would do a lot of things for you. So essentially there were subroutines to solve systems such as AX equal to B to solve different type of differential equations using runge kutta method and so on. And also you could do any kind of matrix manipulation, whether it is multiplication, whether it is the eigenvalues of a matrix, all these things using built-in subroutines or subroutines you could easily call from free libraries. Now, one of the things which started taking place, and this was near the beginning of the 1990s, is that there was a transition to C. And many of the university professors, especially in computer science departments, started saying that Fortran is not an appropriate language. It is not something which you really want in the university setting. So in fact, when I was at the University of Maryland in College Park, while the different engineering professors out there were all using Fortran, the various codes which we were developing in the mechanical and aerospace type of fields, they all essentially were in Fortran. The computer science department people tried to say that all the assignments need to be submitted in C. So when I took a class in numerical computation, this class was completely in C and we were told to use different type of pointers and so on to solve all the numerical problems and do this particular class. And this was quite a difficult class, especially it became more difficult because the conversion of your mind from Fortran to C is extremely difficult. And this is something which starts with the fact that the simple lists which are out there today for example in python the precursor of what was there in fortran they started from 0 to n minus 1 instead of the usual 1 to n which was the case in fortran so this is what c started with c actually would take any vector and start it off from 0 to n minus 1 it would do the same with matrices and so on and not only that there was this particular tendency at that time to use pointers to reference various data out there and this led to a lot of complexity as far as the coding is concerned now of course once you understood the language c it became very powerful it became very fast and so at that time all the computer science professors were extremely gung-ho about the c programming language carnegie and richie's book was the thing to read and fortran was considered to be an obsolete language which should be discarded at that point, even Pascal was going very strong and Pascal was supposed to be a language through which you learned programming and then you switch to C and then you use C for the rest of your life in system programming and so on. Now, of course, what started happening that as far as the engineering departments are concerned, they never really liked C so much. So after some time, they started switching to MATLAB and essentially MATLAB has the way of thinking, which is very similar to Fortran. And it also doesn't require all those libraries out there. So you do not need to call many of the Imcel type of libraries. Many functions are built into Fortran. So essentially, if you want to do many simple tasks, such as find the eigenvalues of a matrix, there are built-in functions out there. Now, later, of course, in Fortran, many of the things which were there were brought back in, for example, in Fortran 90 and Fortran, and Fortran 2003. But that time Fortran had become actually too old it had been relegated to the background by MATLAB because MATLAB licenses were bought by all the different universities out there MATLAB had nice plotting facilities so as far as universities are concerned their main aim in life is to write papers and so as far as MATLAB is concerned it would directly convert your formulas into plots which would be put into paper so you could say that MATLAB was the formula to paper translation language so it essentially helped people publish papers publish very rapidly and they could take the graphs which came out of MATLAB and put it in LaTeX and continue with their life now many people when they leave the university setting they are going to realize that MATLAB actually was something 
which requires license fee. This is something from which we are shielded when we are at a university because universities typically will buy MATLAB and many people essentially use this particular version of MATLAB in their life. Now, when you go to a typical company, especially a small company and even larger companies, you will find that there is no MATLAB out there. So this is something I discovered when I left the university and joined a company. And at that time, you have to use C or you have to use Fortran or probably nowadays you will have to use Python. So all these languages have the huge advantage of being essentially free. And that is why what happens is that you have to again make a transition from MATLAB to Python when you leave the university setting and go out to the industries and the companies. So this is the thing which happened historically that unfortunately Fortran led to C, but then the engineers didn't like C, so they switched to MATLAB. And finally, after a couple of decades and more time, people are again switching to Python. So as far as universities are concerned, they still do most of their work in MATLAB because MATLAB remains free for them. But then after the people leave the universities, they have to switch to Python. So maybe if you are somebody at the university, you can start using Python straight away because there are many libraries in Python out there, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and so on. And Python is also something which is going to translate your formulas into papers. And not only it can translate your formulas into papers, it can also translate them into actual products as far as companies are concerned.